with the Ball Hill Wind Project here in the town of Villanova, uh, we're going to have a, a negative economic effect. We're going to have a negative uh, health effect, which is could be very serious. Environmentally, it's uh, it's just not sound. It's just not it's just not good. My name is John Robinson. I live in the town of Villanova. Uh, I'm speaking to you today because uh, there's a lot on my mind and, and concern for the area, the town, the board, the way things are being run here in this town. The situation with the turbines is what really uh, got me started on being involved. We've got turbines that are going up that are 80% subsidized by you, the taxpayers by me. Um, they're maybe 20-30% effective when they're running. Uh, we see broken parts on the, the ones along the interstate. Uh, we're going to have problems with ours and I don't think all those problems have been addressed. Uh, the town wants to sweep it under. There's certain individuals that are going to make 10,000, 12,000 per turban. We'd really like to see this go through. If people don't like it, you're free to vote with your feet and move. And I mean this is our property. We, we own the land. So there's a lot of money involved, and that's motivating a lot of people in a certain direction. I think it's motivating a board, which I feel is unethical, technically legal maybe in some of the things they're doing, but definitely not ethical, definitely not concerned for the, the entire community. It's not going to be a win-win. So roll call vote. Richard Ardello? Yes. Nate Palmer? Yes. Keith Butcher? Yes. Yvonne Park? Yes. Okay. The motion carries. So the motion is Motions carried. carried. We've got turbines that are being built are 900 tons of steel, 2,500 tons of concrete, and 45 tons of plastic just for one turbine. That requires a lot of mining. What about the ecology and what's going on in the rest of the world? I know some people are concerned about ecology and, and what's happening and what are we doing to the soil, what are we doing to the water, what are we doing to, to the air, what about the human health here in Villanova? The majority in the, in the community do not want them, but they're not being heard. They're not being allowed to be, be heard. And I think a lot of them just aren't aware of, of what the situation is with the turbines, what, what's involved and, and how, how this is going to change everything here in this community. In these windmills, the lease they gave us, it was 63 years. My grandkids are going to be old in 63 years. I did the research. I found pedestals the size of our house left in the fields because these companies went broke. They make a lot of promises. It's one thing when I wrote an oil and gas lease, I didn't make a promise I couldn't keep. And that's what I've seen here is the leases. They wouldn't change a thing. I would make it to accommodate landowner, to accommodate the person. This lease, they wouldn't change a thing. It was take it or leave it. Go with your feet. I am not participating in this project. I'm going to have a turbine that is 1,500 feet away from my home. It's now, one. they want to put 100 feet higher. They do not want to move the setback. So 1,500 feet, and I'm going, it's going to be 100 foot high. My three concerns are safety, that is a big one. I'm concerned about the, the bigger blades, the taller tower, I'm worried about turbine collapse, I'm worried about fire, I'm worried about blade throw, ice throw, I'm worried about health, viral acoustic uh, diseases. And the nurse already mentioned everything that could happen there. I am very, very worried about that. And the last thing I'm worried about is my property value. Because all I know is that wherever I've seen turbines, and I've been to wind farms all over the world. I have been to Holland. I've been, I've been everywhere, and I've seen them. They are far away from residents. They're, I've never seen anything this close. I ask you to help us, help this community. These wind companies come in like a plague of locusts, and they destroy communities. It's neighbors against neighbors up there, and then they leave and they move on to the next community to destroy. I am asking you for your help. After seeing the negative health impacts, many communities and states are requiring setbacks of two miles or more. Over seven states are over one mile and up for setbacks. 
Everyone in this area, well beyond, will be impacted. You cannot hide a moving skyscraper that is taller than any building in Buffalo or many cities. And trolls came slithering into your community a few years ago and said, we can give you this and we can do that. And then they don't. They don't do any of it. That's just a sales pitch. You're a salesman. You're not interested in anybody's children, anybody's phone service, or TV service, property value. You're going to finish and go. I am the owner of a small certified organic farm that is about to be in the middle of a large wind project. I have five turbines going in across the road from me. Three turbines going in in back of my pastures. Transmission lines going in in the field next to my pastures. A substation going in right across the road. And two construction access roads on either side of my house within a quarter mile. This project will devastate my farm. A project that destroys our ecosystem, ruins the livelihood of small family farmers, creates serious health problems for the community, and destroys everyone's property values, is not for the public good. Uh, once the, count, the county had said no, they came back and did what they call a supermajority vote which meant that they needed a certain number of votes to get it, a large number of votes to get it to pass, a super majority. We had one town member who probably would have voted against the higher turbines. He resigned just before, just before that uh, meeting. After much thought and consideration, I now tender my resignation to the town of the Illinois board. So Yvonne Park was appointed in there to fill in that position. So with the supervisor and, and the people that they had, they could still keep the turbine thing going. You know? There are some, some, a number of people in, in the town that are, are very upset with these turbines and the way the board's functioning and have gone to the expense and, and the extent to uh, get an attorney out of Buffalo who's filed an Article 78. Uh, the Honorable Judge H. Dillon is the one that was uh, involved with that, and he had put a stop to any construction until additional studies were made. Uh, there wasn't studies made on the underground lines in uh, going into Hanover. There wasn't adequate studies made on the Eagles. In fact, I just saw one yesterday in my house, just outside my house in the back. There's four federal laws prevent the taking of eagles, but it seems like the wind turbines tend to be exempt from that. And uh, there's, the judge had asked for more studies on that as well. So those are the things that are waiting. In the meantime, they're not supposed to be doing any work on, on wind turbines or the turbine project. Yet I've seen people surveying, posting stakes along the right of way, painting on the road, um, markings, and even the uh, Cotton drilling has come up, and they told them to get up there and, and find out where the lines are because a lot of them were put in so fast and don't have the metal tape on them. They don't know where the lines are. So they're having to go in and spot the lines, which means drilling, which is off the right-of-way, and it's back in where where they need to go. Somebody's doing some work here. Apparently the judge in his ruling had, had decided that there was not adequate studies done uh, the planning board here in the town was inadequate. Uh, the setbacks were, the studies for the higher turbines was, was not adequate. It hadn't been studied. So there's really quite a bit involved there that they, they just try to gloss over and say, well, it's, it's no different than the 499 height turbines. You know, it's all the same. The studies are done. And, of course, it's studies that they paid for. It's not independent studies. So... The judge made his ruling and he's restricted them and required additional studies. We've got a board that's all for it and ready to go and they're, they're pushing it as, as hard as they can push it to get it done and Res is doing the same because I think there's uh, tax benefits uh, going to Res. They need to get started this year, this fall I believe.
there was a resolution and voted on to abolish the planning board. Say that was because we did have people that were willing to serve, but they didn't want them serving. Why else would they abolish it? You know, we've always had a planning board, but here at the last hour when people are ready to serve, they don't want them to serve. So they resolved it and they just did away with it. No, the uh, the wind law is not, it's not there what's been set up. It's not there for the uh, the whole town. It's there for the, the benefit of the wind company and those that want the wind turbines. We have a, the town had given a, a setback, of a, allowed a setback amazingly of a, only 1,000 feet. The res had voluntarily said, well, we'll do 1,200. We're, we're good guys. You know, we'll do 1,200. But if you look at uh, eight World Health Organization, they're talking about more like 5,000, 7,000 feet you know, from, from a residence. And a lot of ours is set not from the not from the property line but the residence and some people like myself have a residence that's some distance off the the property line but what about the frontage for mine how can i possibly use that to, or if i want to sell lots or build houses on it i couldn't use it because of the overlay and and the distance from the turbines last year august in august 2018 we had a meeting here at the town i was here an hour early and the place was already filled. I, I couldn't get into the, uh, the meeting hall because the, uh, the wind turbine people, their employees had, had pretty much taken over all the seating that was in there and no one else was allowed in, by the fire marshal allowed into the building. Uh, next thing we know, the, the police sheriff and a state trooper had turned up and took the supervisor into the office and said, look, you have to accommodate, apparently accommodate these people. So the meeting ended up outside, but Res had pretty well blocked everything where the town people couldn't get in to participate in that meeting. And that's, again, the lack of transparency, the lack of uh, consideration for the rest of the town and, and people that have opposing views. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to know about it. They don't want to tolerate it or allow it. It's just, it's not right. What bothers me probably the most is the infrasound, that something you can't see just like x-rays, you don't see it, but it's going to be there. And it, it does have health effects. WHO, World Health Organization, has, has made statements on that. Uh, you can look at many of the, uh, the turbine sites where people have complained, and they've even taken turbines down. The power and uh, the control is being is being uh, focused right on the town board themselves, that group think and that group that want our pro-turban. Uh, pro you know, it's, it's just, they can do it legally, but it's just not ethical. They're, they're shutting out the community. They're shutting out the people that are willing to serve.